So we are now here into September of the 2024 campaign. This is where things really start to go down to the wire here with the tight wildcard race. And unfortunately, you may notice the record on the screen as we had an all time collapse currently in the middle of it as well just an absolutely terrible month of august i was genuinely speechless while i was simming to our next game that we were going to record i was going to play one of those games against the phillies late into august but by the time i simmed up to that series we were already very much in the midst of this losing streak and already out of the race I mean, we are currently sitting on a 16-game losing streak here, 61 and, four, and 76 here on the year, very much below 500, 28 and a half games back from the Cubs here, sitting at fourth place in the NL Central, and then also 12 games back in the wild card. We were leading the wild card heading into the All-Star break. I mean, I genuinely just have no idea what to say. This is just, I mean, I'm, I'm speechless. I don't know what else to say. This is just an all-time collapse. I, did, I didn't even know what was going on. It was just every, I would sim a day and boom, we lost. Sim another day, boom, we lost again. Sim another day, boom, just nonstop. And now we're on a 16-game losing skid. But anyways, we do have a couple roster moves to make here as we are heading into September. Uh, the first one we did was Mitch Keller sent back down to AAA as he was absolutely awful through his seven starts here in the big leagues this season. Sent back down to AAA Louisville, who you saw him in the uh, minor league update video previously. And then Brandon Williamson is back up here in the big leagues as the fifth starter. He had about five solid starts in AAA while down there. And then the September call-ups are Ronnie Dawson being called up rewarded for his good season in AAA, as well as Josh James to get another arm in the bullpen. So take a look at what the lineups have been looking like here up in Cincinnati. As you can see, Nolan Jones is no longer a first baseman for us. I did not make that switch like just now. That was a switch that happened even before the losing streak started. So it's not like you know, Nolan Jones not being a bat in the order hitting was like a big reason why. It just literally the whole team got cold right at the right at the, right at the wrong spot, and it just killed our season. And if you can see the rotation, the whole rotation right now, aside from Hunter Green and obviously Williamson, who just came back up, is cold. The whole freaking rotation. And I really just don't know what to say other than it was an all-time collapse. So unfortunately, there will be no playoff baseball in Cincinnati here in 2024. And we are about to try to snap this 16-game losing skid against the Atlanta Braves. Let's take a look at their roster. They got a couple good prospects up here in the big leagues with them now. Drew Waters and Michael Harris, both Georgia boys, both on the big league club. Waters has been solid for them at the major, at the major league level, while Harris has been more of a uh, fourth outfitter type who hasn't gotten too much time up in the bigs. While Matt Olson, Ronald Acuna Jr., and Wilson Contre or William Contreras are all have been raking for the Braves. And then they have Marcelo Zuna, who is on the IL with a broken arm. Also very, very solid pitching staff, probably one of the best staffs among Major League Baseball. And then a very solid bullpen as well to go along with it. The Reds in the middle of a 16-game losing skid here trying to defend their home ballpark and snap that streak against the Atlanta Braves where Tyler Malley's toe in the slab for the Reds making his 29th start. Take a look at the Braves lineup he'll be facing on the day as well as the Reds lineup listed 1-9. We'll start things off top half of the first inning where Brendan Shoemake lays down a bunt to get things started. And that's going to be a single for him. So he's on first base to kick off the game. And then it brings up Matt Olson with one out. And he's going to ground one over to shortstop as Walls was trying to cover the bag. Gets all twisted around. And that's going to be a single. Allows Shoemake to move up to third base. And then Acuna grounds one over to De La Cruz. Knocks it down. Cannot make the catch. Run comes in to score. And unfortunately... De La Cruz was hurt on the play, but luckily it was not anything serious, but he does have to come out for the rest of this game. So Max Schrock is going to come off the bench and play some third base here for Cincinnati. And then Maley would settle in as he gets a ground ball over to second base and Castellano makes the out for the final out of the inning. 
Move things on, bottom half of the first now, Max Schrock at the dish, ripping one right back up the middle. Here with one out on the 2-0 count, so he's on first base. Then it brings up Paven Smith, who's going to ground one over to the left side of the infield. Swanson knocks it down on the dive, but Smith beats it out over at first base on the throw. So first and second here with one out, and unfortunately, J.D. Martinez is one of the cold hitters on this team. Grounds into a 5-4-3 inning-ending double play. Move things on to the third, where Taylor Walls gets robbed on a line out there. The leaping catch from Dansby Swanson, his fellow shortstop. Move things on top of the fourth now, where Matt Olson connects on a pitch, and that's going to get into the seats in right center field. Makes it a 2-0 Atlanta lead as they extended his 31st of the season. An absolute bomb off the bat, or an absolute laser off the bat, I should say. But luckily, Maley would settle in there a bit as he strikes out Acuna for the at number, for at number one, and then he blows the fastball by Austin Riley for at number two, and then would pick up his third K of the inning by striking out Ozzy Albies to make it a 2-0 game here for the Braves. Move things on, bottom of the fourth, Max Schrock picks up his second knock of the game here. This one's going to hit off the right center field wall and that's going to be an easy two-bagger there to lead off the inning. And then it brings up Paven Smith, who hits a rocket right back up the middle. That's going to score Schrock from second base as the throw goes to the plate. Paven Smith moves up to second base with no outs still, but unfortunately, two quick outs produced by the Reds' bats. Brings up Joe Adele, who flies one into deep left center field, but it is going to be caught on the run by Drew Waters for at number three, so nothing going. 2-1 is the score. Top of the fifth here as it is Dansby Swanson singling one up the middle with one out, and then he would proceed to go and swipe second base on the ball in the dirt. So now he's in the scoring position here for Atlanta. Runner on second, one out for the catcher of the Braves, and he goes down the right field line, bloops in up against the wall. Swanson's going to score from second base. It's an RBI double, makes it 3-1. And then it will bring up the top of the order with Brendan Shoemake, and he's going to power a ball into right field. And this is his two-run blast for the first career home run for Brendan Shoemake. Makes it a 5-1 to one Braves lead, and that would pretty much just wrap things up here for this Reds, uh, Reds order on the day. They could not score any more runs, only one on the day as the Braves easily beat the Reds, and they extend their losing streak to 17 straight losses. The final ended up being 8-1 to one here at Great American Ballpark. Brendan Shoemake gets player of the game honors for his 4-for-5 four day at the plate. And just absolutely nothing goes right for this Reds team yet again, as I, like I said, they lost 17 straight now. So now we are a little bit later into the month of September, and of course, we're just having a good month now. We have won every series here in the month of September, and now that we're basically officially out of the race, and of course, now we're playing good baseball, we lost 17 straight, and then immediately go, and like I said, have won every series on the schedule up until this point, where we have a two-game set against the Orioles, and we did take the first game here. And this Orioles team is a very young roster, as you would expect. They have our old friends Jose Barrero and Ivan Johnson in their lineup. Johnson has been their everyday second baseman. He has not been great for them, though. Well, Jose Barrero, who they received at the deadline for John Means, has only been up for 16 games here in the big leagues. They've also called up Heston Kerstad, who is finally up in the big leagues for them, putting up solid numbers on about 250 ABs. While unfortunately, Adley Rushman has not been great for them. Only about a 700 OPS. But Ryan Mountcastle has been good. He's actually been one of the most consistent power bats in the American League throughout this series. I always see him peppered throughout the league leaders. While the Orioles pitching has been absolutely just awful. I mean, just nobody pitches well on this team. The highest war among pitchers this season for them was Kyle Bradish with a 1.7. It is time for the second game of a two-game split here at Camden Yards. Against the Baltimore Orioles, it is the Cincinnati Reds who are going to be throwing the former O in the left-hander John Means, making his 32nd start here in 2024. And then take a look at the Reds lineup. He'll be facing on the day listed 1-2-9, as well as the Orioles. Going to be throwing Grayson Rodriguez, their top pitching prospect now, been in the major leagues for multiple seasons, as well as the Reds lineup listed one 1-2-9 on the day. 
We'll start things off top half of the first where Ellie De La Cruz hits an absolute laser at the left field, but it is in that deep part of the ballpark where it's going to be caught for nothing else going. So bottom of the first here, it is Austin Hayes hitting a deep fly to left center field, but Nick Senzel runs it down to make out number two, and then Means would proceed to strike out Ramon Urias on the drop third strike for out number three. So scoreless innings for both pitchers. Move things on to the second where Adley Rushman goes down looking. He's a pair of shoes up there. And then for the third and final out, it would be uh, Dahlbeck who swings through the pitch. The DH on the day for them. So another two strikeouts there for Means, and then he picks up another one here in the third inning as he strikes out old friend Jose Barrero. And then Yvonne Johnson, the former red farmhand, pops one up into shallow right field where Max Schrock will make the catch. Now we're on to the top of the fourth, checking in with the Reds' bats. Tyler Stevenson, line drive right at Cedric Mullins. Nothing going, still scoreless. On to the bottom of the fourth, Cedric Mullins draws a leadoff walk, spits on ball four. Then it would bring up Austin Hayes, the no batting gloves man who lines one through the middle of the field. That's going to be the first hit of the day for the Baltimore Orioles. So first and second here with one out. Brings up Ryan Mountcastle who grounds into a 3-6-1 double play to get out of the inning. So still scoreless. Move things on top of the six. Taylor Walls getting creative. Laying down a perfect bunt for the infield single with two outs. Then it brings up De La Cruz. As Walls goes and swipes second base to get himself into scoring position. So runner on second, and then De La Cruz spits on a very close pitch for ball four. So first and second here. Two outs brings up Stevenson, and he just cannot lay off the pitch as he swings through strike three, and we are still scoreless in Baltimore. Move things on to the sixth, bottom of the sixth inning now, where Yvonne Johnson's going to poke one through the left side. That's a leadoff single for him. Then it would bring up Cedric Mullins at the top of the order, and he's going to power a ball at the right center field. Senzel cannot get to it. It's over the fence. A two-run blast as the Orioles strike first in this one for Cedric Mullins' 26th home run of the season. Move things on top of the seventh where J.D. Martinez is going to hit one to a similar portion of the ballpark. Gets a pitch right down the middle and sends it out there. Over the fence, a solo shot cuts the lead in half. It's now a 2-1 ball game. And then it's Dylan Tate on for the O's here in the eighth inning. And he would proceed to give up the lead. Nick Senzel showing he can hit off against right-handers as well. Hits an absolute bomb here to the deep pushback fence in left field. Ties the game at two for a second solo shot of the day for the Reds batting order. They would take that 2-2 game into the top of the ninth. Tyler Stevenson leading off, grounds one up the middle. That gets through the infield. Base knock to lead off the inning. So he's on first, brings on Drew Rahm, the lefty out of the bullpen for the 16th time this season for the Orioles. And he's facing J.D. Martinez, who grounds one over to shortstop. Somehow, Martinez beats this one out at first, so he's on first, and then that would end his day as he gets pinch ran for for Randy, Ronnie Dawson off the bench to get some extra speed out there. Jonathan India comes on to pinch hit as well here for Cincinnati, and he would deliver the 1-1 count right back up the middle into right center field. Ronnie Dawson's going first to third, and India has himself a hustle double. So two runners in scoring position here for the Reds, and Max Schrock grabs one through the right side with the infield in. That scores the go-ahead run, makes it 3-2. Nothing else would come in. India gets gunned down on third. So they take that 3-2 lead into the ninth inning where Lucas Sims comes on trying to close the door. Jake Bowers came on to play first to get some extra defense in the infield. And with one out, it would be Ryan Mountcastle who's going to get things started for the Orioles' right center field up against the wall. He delivers yet again for this Baltimore ball club. Gets into scoring position. Then it brings up Adley Rushman who goes into left field, moves Mountcastle up to third. First and third here with one out. And TJ Antone, the ground ball specialist, is going to come into the game out of the pen to try to preserve the lead. Brian Anderson comes on to play third base as Ellie De La Cruz moves to second base to get the supreme infield defense out there. And Antone does what he does best. Strikes out Dahlbeck for out number two and then gets a ground ball off the bat of Kirsch down over to 
first base. Bauer sprints to the bag, steps on it, and the Reds hold on to win this game as they win another series here in the month of September. A nice rebound month from their absolutely brutal collapse in August, but unfortunately that month did cost them their playoff spot as there will be no postseason baseball for the Reds yet again. Final on this one was 3-2. J.D. Martinez gets player of the game honors. He went 2-4 on the day with a home run. Senzel had the tying home run on the 8th. Jonathan India had a clutch pinch hit double to set up the go-ahead run. And then Schrock drove in that run with a single in the ninth inning. Mullins had a two-run home run for the Orioles. Those were their only runs of the day. While John Means goes six innings, only gives up seven hits, strikes out five, one walk, and two earned runs for the former Oriole pitcher against his old team. So with that being said, that's going to wrap things up here for this edition of the Cincinnati Reds franchise on MLB The Show 22. I've been your host, Jerseyborn, and I'm saying, the spice must flow.